What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together a super budget, small form factor gaming PC that actually puts down some pretty decent performance, a lot more than I thought it would going into this little build here. When it comes to these small form factor PCs, we only have a few choices when it comes to GPUs. Now using the integrated graphics is kind of out of the question on these older Optiplexes, but we've got something like the GT730, the GT1030, a 750, a 1050 or a 1650, talking about these small form factor low profile cards. When it comes to the 1650 nowadays for a low profile version, they're going for around $320 to $350, so that's also kind of out of the question for some people. But with this specific Optiplex that I have here, which is an Optiplex 3050 SFF, we can't even fit a 1050 or a 1650 in here, given the height of the cooler. These are really dual slot low profile cards, even the older uh, 750 or the 750 Ti has just a really large cooler on it and won't fit inside of this 3050. You can go with a GT 710 or a 730, not great performance. The GT 1030 really isn't that bad, but we only have two gigabytes of VRAM. So there's not many choices, but there is a new card on the market and I think it's perfect for these small form factor builds. I've done a couple videos on it, but before we move over there, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. I've actually been using this site for a couple years now. They do offer Steam Keys, Origin, Uplay. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office, but the main reason that I use URCD Keys is for their Windows Keys. Right now, their Windows 10 Pro OEM key is $19.84, but if you use code ET at checkout, you can get 25% off. Now there is one thing to keep in mind. When upgrading your PC using a key like this, you can change your GPU, you can change the RAM, the hard drives, the CPU. The only thing that'll stop this key from working in the future is swapping out the motherboard but they're definitely cheap enough. And another great thing about buying from here is they do accept PayPal. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm gonna head over to my updates and security. We're gonna go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone. And basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed. And that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. As I was saying, there's a new card on the block known as the Radeon RX 6400. You can get it in this low profile, single slot design, and a lot of people have kind of been looking down on this card given the price on it. It's around $150 to $160, but even with the market the way it is right now for low profile cards, I'm a huge fan of this thing. I've done a couple videos on it, pairing it up with higher end CPUs, and the card actually does a really good job, but I was really interested to see what it would do in a $70 eBay PC, and that's exactly what we have here. With the 3050, we can only put a single slot card in here, so our choices are very limited. This has an i5-7500. It's got a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue Drive, and for this, I'm just gonna use it as game storage because this 3050 also has an M.2 slot. We can easily add an M.2 SSD. This unit here came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, no operating system installed on the drive, and I was able to pick it up for $70. So that does leave me a little room for an extra 256 gigabyte M.2 drive. I just picked up a cheap Kingston drive from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description. My operating system is going to be running from this, and we're going to store our games on that 500 gigabyte drive. When it comes to these mini PCs, they are a dime a dozen on eBay. You can pick them up in all kinds of different configurations. With up to 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can get i7s in them, i3s. This one has that i5-7500 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And for the GPU, we're going to be adding the new Radeon RX 6400. This is an XFF 105 Swift card, and it comes in around $160. So all in with this whole setup here, I'm out $250, and I'm really interested if it would be worth spending that money on a small form factor build like this. Now what you could do is take that $250, put it towards a bigger PC that you can upgrade down the road, but if you want a game now, this is totally possible to do. Like I mentioned, these are a dime a dozen nowadays on eBay. Okay, so I've got everything installed. I just went with Windows 10 on that M.2 drive. As you can see for the CPU, we've got that Intel i5-7500. It's unfortunate, but these only have four cores with no extra threads. It's got a max boost up to 3.8 gigahertz. 16 gigabytes of RAM running in dual channel at 2400 megahertz. And of course, the Radeon RX 6400. 
We've got four gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It's running at a 64-bit bus, so it's not super fast, but it does a pretty decent job. And this card happens to be a PCIe 4.0 card, but it will work in a 3.0 slot. I've got GPU-Z up and running here. As you can see, the card is 4.0. The slot in this unit is 3.0, but it's working really well. I'm just going to jump right into some gameplay, and the first game we're going to test here is Forza Horizon 5. We're at 1080p, no resolution scale, medium settings, and uh, it works much better than I thought it would with that i5-7500. So with this, the way it's set up right now, 1080p, medium settings, we're getting an average of 81 FPS. It's more than playable in my opinion. Medium settings still looks really good on this, and that 1080p resolution is definitely awesome for an older machine like this. The RX 6400 definitely isn't the most powerful card on the market. A lot of people don't like it because of the price point and the performance, but for these small form factor builds, I think it's a pretty decent option. We will jump back into some PC gaming and we'll also test out some emulation, but I wanted to take a look at a few GPU benchmarks. Here we have 3D Mark, Night Raid came in with a 22,958, Fire Strike 9061, and finally we've got Time Spy here with a 3,537. Not bad for the price of this unit, but you know if you're used to gaming on a higher end PC, these might seem a little slow, and I think it really comes down to this CPU. Like I mentioned, the 6400 isn't the most powerful card in the world but we should see higher scores here with a better CPU, but that's not what this video is about. It's about putting this inside of a super cheap PC to see what kind of gaming performance we can get out of this thing. All right, so here we have The Witcher 3 1080p high settings. We're getting amazing performance with this game. I get an average of 82 FPS out of this, and you know, if you wanted to turn some of these down to medium to get a little more out of it, it's up to you, or just lock it at 60. Turn V-Sync on and play it at high all day long. Next up, we've got Street Fighter V, 1080p, high settings, and to tell you the truth, I'm pretty sure we could have went up to maximum with this, I just turned it to high to see what it would do, and it's running at a constant 60. I know for a fact that the RX 6400 does really well with this card, but it's been a while since I've tested one of these 7th generation i5s. As you can see here, it's going to handle the game just fine. GTA 5 is another game that the RX 6400 can handle really well, but uh, as you can see with Afterburner, we're basically maxing out all four cores on this 7500i5, and this is where the issue is going to come in with a quad-core CP, especially an older one like this. But it does run it really well. 1080p, high settings, we're getting an average of 83 FPS. Next up, we've got Elden Ring, 1080p, low settings, and that CPU is dragging us down. We've only got four cores here, no extra threads, with a max clock up to 3.6 on all four cores. This GPU, paired up with a good CPU, can actually handle this game quite well at 1080p low, but uh, unfortunately, we just don't have the power out of that CPU with the 7500. And when it comes to God of War, we're seeing the same thing here with that CPU. I mean, we're basically maxing the CPU out. All four cores are pegged at 3.6 gigahertz. We're at 1080p, original settings, FSR set to balance, and, you know, taking the resolution down or even turning FSR to performance doesn't help out because we're CPU bound with this game and that i5-7500. And finally, for the PC gaming side of things, we have Cyberpunk 2077 900p low FSR set to performance. As you can see, CPU is holding us back with this one again. Taking a look at some emulation, this little setup does a really good job with PSP. I'm using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan backend, 6x resolution, and it's going to run basically anything that's compatible with this emulator here at full speed. And with some of this stuff, we could even go up to 10x. Next up, we've got the Dolphin emulator with a Wii game. We're at 1440p, DirectX 11, and with Vulkan, I did notice a few dips here and there at 1440p, but DirectX 11 on the RX 6400 does work really well with this emulator.
And finally, we've got some PS2 emulation using PC SX2. We're at 1080p using the DirectX 11 back end. And when it comes to some of the easier to emulate games, you could definitely take them up to 1440p. So in the end, is it worth building something like this in 2022? Well, as you can see with that i5-7500, it is getting a bit dated for these newer AAA games. We do need a little more CPU. They love more cores, more threads, and we've only got four cores here with no extra threads. It's really up to you, and it really depends on what kind of games you're playing. Esports stuff like Fortnite, Valorant, and Overwatch are going to work just fine with the CPU and GPU combo. And if you want to build something like this for emulation, Keep in mind, there's a lot of games that are going to be emulatable on this. Got some Wii, GameCube, PS2, PS1, PSP, Dreamcast, N64, but when it comes to the higher end stuff like PS3, there will be a lot of games that are going to struggle on this CPU. But if you're looking for a small form factor, low cost option to get you by right now, then this could be a good option for some people. Like I mentioned, these Optiplexes are a dime a dozen, and with the new RX 6400 being one of the cheapest, newer, low-profile cards that you can pick up on the market right now, I think this would make a great little setup as long as you know exactly what you're getting into. If you're interested in building something like this, I will leave links to everything I used in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one, and like always, thanks for watching.